Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. What a beautiful day to be at church. The Sabbath being like a together with our church family. So I love this verse from Psalm 122, verse 1 that says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And we have the freedom to do that. So what a privilege. So I'd like to do something as a rehearsal for later, okay? Uh, look to, like, uh, your right side, your left side, and if you have not done that yet, say Happy Sabbath to the person close to you. I think we, it's really important for us to, uh, to, to do that. Good. I like that. So this is the rehearsal after the service. So try to find someone that you don't know or someone that you have not talked to today yet and say happy Sabbath. Ask how the person is doing. So, and if you don't see someone that is usually here, like a, call that person. So we need that contact. So we're very happy that you're here. Uh, happy that uh, those who are watching from home, so God has a blessing for us today here. And I have some announcements. 
Uh, you have that in your bulletin, but it's always good to remember. Uh, we have our sunset cruise on July 31st. So, and uh, I think it's going to be a great time. So, if you have plans to go, please talk with Lise. Uh, so, our plan, if we are able to have 49 people, uh, we are going to have the entire boat just for, for ourselves. So, and I think it's going to be a delightful time uh, to be together. So, prayer meeting. So, we will continue our like, uh, uh, Bible study on the life of Paul, Wednesday at 6 p.m. So, we are having a, a blessed time learning together. Um, Agape Supper. So, we have uh, our communion service last evening. So, if you forgot or if you could not be there. So, it was such a beautiful time. So, we had... Uh, uh, Many people bringing soup, so like, uh, thank you so much for those who were participating in the way. Decoration was beautiful, and then we had our communion. So m make plans for the next one. And uh, connection card, you have that in your bulletin. If by any chance you're visiting our church for the first time or the second time, so please talk with someone in the reception uh, because we have a special gift for you. And uh, the connection card um, changes every week. So if you look at the back, we have here, my next step today is, and then you have uh, uh, like uh, five sentences related to the sermon. So, and you have a space at the end here on the bottom uh, for prayer request. If you could, please, Fill the connection card out so then um, we could uh, pray for you and get to know you better. So this is the time like, uh, to transition into our worship service. And I'd like to invite you to close your eyes and pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much because we are here together. This place is not a church. It's the place that your church meets. So it's when we come together, that's your people, that's your church. And we are here for the only reason to worship you. Father, we invite you here into our presence. And we ask you that your Holy Spirit may touch our hearts through the songs, through this message that Pastor Ray is going to share to the, through the prayer times, through the children's story, everything may point to Jesus. And it is in his name that we pray. Amen.
morning. Will you stand with me as we sing our opening hymn, please? The offering this morning is directed to the world budget. The Seventh-day Adventist Church is known throughout the world for its mission, outreach. Your regular and systematic offerings, mission offerings, are like a life-giving river with tributaries flowing around the world carrying refreshing water to missions, mission fields. Every time we give our mission offerings, we're adding water to a life-giving river that flows through often parched lands, bringing life and hope. We're helping the church grow, not only locally, but also in areas that we may not have 
have even heard of. We're assisting missionaries that we may never ever meet and building schools and clinics that we probably will never even visit. We are helping plant churches we may never even worship in. And we're bringing life to the church's mission by introducing Jesus' love to the hearts and the minds of people all around the world. So giving to the mission offering may not be such a glamorous thing as giving to a specific well-advertised project or program. But mission offering helps sustain all the mission projects throughout the entire world. In Matthew 28, Jesus himself said to us, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. So therefore, I ask all our members here this morning to please prayerfully ask the Holy Spirit to show you what more you and I can do to support and sustain our Lord's work until he comes. Let us pray. And the offering, of course, as we always do from Sabbath to Sabbath, will be collected after the main service. Lord Jesus, we ask and want to thank you, Lord, that you, O Lord, have made us stewards also of your kingdom. That, Lord, that we are part of this Adventist, Adventist movement, Father, this world movement, that you have, Lord, have asked us to help in the mission of the worldwide church. Guide us, O oh Lord, as we continue to proclaim your love throughout the world and throughout our communities. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay, it's time for the children's story. Kids, we need you to go out and collect those dollars. If you don't have a container, we have some extra ones up here. If you ever feel sad, you just have to look at the kid's face and it makes you smile. such a blessed church to have so many young children. That means we're a growing church, Pastor. And we're a giving church. for you. Who knows, and I'm looking towards my crater roll kids, 
because we try to learn a new word or something new in Crater all every year, or every week. What is electricity? You know what electricity is? Yeah, I only see a few hands. Well, I'm, electricity is what turns on these lights. If we had no electricity, it would be dark in here. It would be very dark. And back a long time ago, when there was no electricity, when the only way you could see in the dark is that you would have to have candles or you could have lanterns like that. As Freddy was getting ready to go to bed, he heard, man overboard, man overboard. Huh? Yeah, not a good thing. And so then he heard, oh, all these people running around top of the ship. Oh no, man overboard. Man overboard! And more. Oh dear. And, and Daddy got up out of the chair he was reading on, and he says, I better go find out what's happened. I better go help. And, and Freddy says, I want to go too. Daddy says, No, you're too little. You stay here. You're going to get, you might, something will happen to you. You stay here. You're too little. And so Daddy went out of their little room and he went upstairs to help. And pretty soon they heard, <laughs> Mommy says, oh dear, I better go help too. And so Mommy goes and Freddie says, but I want to help too. Mommy says, no, Freddie, you're too little. You need to stay here. But but mommy, I can help. No, Freddie, you're too little. You stay here. Don't go out that door. Freddie says, okay, mommy. So mommy goes out to help the lady that she heard crying. And then they heard a bunch of people. They were talking and they were, and then they heard some splashing. And he said, oh, I know. I'll go look out the window. So they went to the window. You know what a window is? Yeah, in the boat, it's just a little round window, just about like this. And he went and looked out the window of the boat. And he opened it up and he stuck his head out. And he tried to see. He couldn't see a thing. It was black. It was so black, he couldn't even see his fingers sticking out of here. It was so black, and he's going, hmm. Then he started thinking, I wonder if that was, I wonder if that was somebody's daddy. I wonder, wouldn't that be terrible if that was my daddy? And then he thought, oh dear, I wonder if it is somebody's daddy. And so he got down off the chair he had gotten so he could go to the window. And he got down off the chair and he kneeled down. And he said, oh, dear Jesus, that might be somebody's daddy. Please help the big people to help find him and get him out of that water. Please, dear Jesus, help them. Amen. And he got up off his knees and all of a sudden, he thought, the lantern. And he went over to the dresser where the lantern was, and he took the lantern really carefully, climbed back up on the chair, and he stuck the lantern through that little hole of a window. He stuck his arm way out as far as he could, yeah, as far as his little arm would go, he stuck his arm out with the lantern on it, 
and he heard, Hey, I can see, I can see him. And he heard the other people say, Yes, there he is. He's over there. Throw the ring over there. And so they threw the buoy over to him. And pretty soon, Freddie heard a big cheer. Yay! They got him. Oh, Freddie's arm was getting tired. But once he heard that cheer, he knew. And he could pull his arm back in. And he put the lantern back. When Mommy and Daddy came back to the room, Freddie said, they got him, didn't they? And Mommy and Daddy said, yeah, how did you know that? Freddie said, because Jesus helped me know what to do to help. And Mommy and Daddy both hugged Freddie and said, oh, Freddie, we are so happy that you listen to Jesus. You know, just because you're little and just because you don't know what electricity is yet doesn't mean Jesus can't use you. Jesus can use you any time. He can use you as long as you're willing to be used. And all you have to do is ask Jesus to be in your heart. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, please bless these children. I ask that you will come and become in their hearts and their lives. Bless them. Bless all of us, Lord, for we are as little children want to be used by you and to be able to hear your voice in Jesus' name, amen. Our theme song this month, our, or, I'm sorry, this quarter, our theme song is In His Time. It's also our prayer song. So join me as we sing, please. moment I would like to invite the congregation to kneel for those that are able to kneel. <clears throat> well,
Almighty Father that art in heaven. Lord, here we are, your people, bowing down and kneeling down and prostrating and bowing our heads to you, knowing that you are the great creator God that has created all things and you have created us. We are grateful, O oh Lord, that you have made us. Because once you have made us, O oh Lord, we have learned to know who you are. And that is a privilege, O oh Lord, given to all of us because at the same time, we have, O oh Lord, a great hope in our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take us to a better home where we can, O oh Lord, dwell with you throughout the ages of time. Lord, as we are here this morning for the great purpose, O oh Father, to render worship to you, the only true God. We want to, O oh Lord, submit ourselves into your hands, render to you our hearts, ask you, Father, to abide within the midst of our lives, so that, Lord, that we may be comforted that we might be encouraged, that we might be, oh Lord, uplifted by the beauty of your love and your words, that, Lord, that we hear from you through your reading, your scriptures, and your holy word. So, Father, as we hear, I pray also, Father, that I know that within this congregation there are many needs and wants. And you are the only one that, Lord, that knows what those needs and wants are. So, Lord, as we, as we're lifting ourselves to you, Lord, in prayer, Lord God, that you can read what our needs and wants are necessary. And, Lord, that you may respond. And as we, O oh Lord, maybe even ask that you may also respond and also to give, O oh Lord. Everyone that asks shall receive, your word says. And Father, I pray that, Lord, that as we, O oh Lord, our needs are come upon us, that, Lord, that we will be also, Father, remaining in contact with you, because you, O oh Lord, enjoy to hear our, our, our voices in prayer. Now, Lord, I pray, O oh Lord, and lift to you, O oh Lord, the two names that we have on our bulletin this morning. One is Yvonne Pachette. And the other one is Vivian Hughes. Lord, uh, you know all the details about what is their needs. And Father, I pr we just want to submit them to you because you're the great physician and you're the only one that can help us. So Lord, we entrust those two souls to, into your hands so that you, Lord, that you may minister to what their needs are. And Lord God, if you want to do miracles, perform miracles, Lord, to your liking, because, Father, by that, we can also glorify you and glorify your holy name. There are also, Father, maybe some others that are maybe in need of prayer because if they are sick or they might have some special need. That, Lord, that our minds, O oh Lord, will lift those names to you right now as we bow, Lord, as we're praying to you and lifting these names. Continue to minister even to our own lives. And, Lord, I just want to say that you know that, Lord, that the end of this world is, is very near. The signs, O oh Lord, tell us, O oh Lord, the nearness of your coming. And, Lord, I'm, I just want to say we thank you, Lord, for these blessed Sabbath school lessons, O oh Lord, that we're receiving. Because I know that it's your mighty hand that's preparing your people for the great crucibles, O oh Lord, that we must face. And that still are, O oh Lord, to come. So help us, O oh Lord, and strengthen us. Each and every one of us strengthen us. And Lord, that we might be drawn nigh to you as, as never ever before, that we may walk with, with our loving Savior, Jesus Christ, so close that, Lord, that the relationship becomes even more intimate than it ever, ever has been in our lives. Oh, Lord, mighty God, we wait for your soon coming because we want you to take us home so that we, oh, Lord, may be joyous and, Lord, joys throughout the ages, and you by our side and our great shepherd. In the name of Jesus, we pray for your blessing 
and, the, and also the, the pouring of your Spirit upon us, your people. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen.
blood of Jesus cleanses me from all sins. The blood of Jesus washes us clean. you see the blood take the coals cleanse our lips because you see the blood thank you so much sister Bonnie I love you that woman not only lives her faith, she sings her faith. How precious. Well, did you have a good week or a bad week? Was it easy or was it hard? Followers of Jesus cling to him by faith because of what he has promised what is in the future. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. We worship you. We are so grateful for what you have done and what you're planning in the near future for us. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. We so much want to see your beautiful face. May we all grow in our faith so we can honor and glorify you in everything. Amen. Have you ever been tempted to start a business? Whatever it is. You, you, you had an idea, a concept, a product, whatever, and you thought, ooh, maybe I should start my own business. Well, let me share with you a few facts about new businesses. Fact number one, most businesses fail. In fact, 90% of all new businesses fail. Not only that, it costs a lot of money to start a new business. The average of $130,000 to $140,000 to start a new business. I don't know about you, but that's a lot of money. What percentage of businesses fail? 90%. And so it really is gambling. It really is rolling the dice. Another fact is you will not get rich quick with your business. Customers will not immediately flock to your new enterprise, no matter what it is. And finally, here's the fifth fact. You will want to quit. Each year in the United States, 670,000 new businesses begin. Way over a half a million. 670,000 new businesses begin. Let me ask a quiz. How many of them fail? 90%. Yes. Yes. So... How many of you are tempted to start a new business? Now, now, would you be more open to the idea if we were to reverse the percentages? What if 90% of new businesses succeeded? How's that for better odds? Now, would you be more open to the idea? Okay, okay. How about if I could guarantee that your new enterprise, your new business would succeed 100%, how many of you now would say, okay, I'm in. I'm going to do it. Yeah, 100% guaranteed. I bet I have a lot of takers now. Listen, we need to see the parable of the mustard seed in its context. Jesus' ministry began with a very, very small group of followers. Twelve disciples and a few women. Very, very small. You know, we look back in history 
And we know how successful Jesus and the 12 apostles, we, we know from history, we know how successful they were. But let's put ourselves back in time. Let's place ourselves in their sandals and see things from their perspective. They seem pretty sure that Jesus was who he said he was, the Messiah. His miracles, his character, and his teachings all seem to support his claim. However, what he did usually baffled them. He seemed to be making friends with prostitutes and tax collectors and those people on the margins. And at the same time, he was making enemies of those in the religious establishment. This behavior certainly did not fit their idea, their concept of Messiah. He didn't seem to have a very successful business plan. Jesus, by the way, understood their thoughts and their feelings perfectly. So Jesus, the teacher, taught a parable. That parable is found in Matthew chapter 13. I invite you to open up your Bibles to Matthew 13, and we'll start in verse 31. And I'm going to read the whole thing to you. Starting in verse 31. It will not take long. Here is another illustration Jesus used. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed planted in a field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but it becomes the largest of garden plants. It grows into a tree and birds come and make nests in its branches. Now I need to share something very obvious to you. It's short. This teaching of Jesus is very, very short and sweet. This passage is only two verses. But here we will discover it has an enormous truth. In fact, we're going to see three huge lessons from this very short and sweet parable. The truth is, good things do come in small packages. Here's a very small parable with a big message. All three of the synoptic gospel writers, that's Matthew, Mark, and Luke. That word synoptic really means similar. Matthew, Mark, and Luke's gospel follow the same chronology. They're very, very similar. John was written much later. He said, I'm not going to repeat what has already been written. So all three of those gospel writers include this very short and pithy parable in their gospels. Most of us know that the mustard seed is a really small seed. It's the smallest seed that was used by farmers in Jesus' day. Here, my friends, are three lessons that I believe Jesus wanted to reveal to his original listeners and to us as well. The first one is this. The church, Christ's church, will have a very, very small start, but it will end in a glorious fashion at the end. Hallelujah. The church in Jesus' day had a very, very insignificant beginning, but it will have a glorious ending, producing great results. I hope that's encouraging to you. This was very, very encouraging to those early, early followers. They, they also learned something from this that the results of the kingdom of God were not up to them. They themselves personally were not responsible for the results of the growth of the church. Their job was to be faithful 
And if they would be faithful, all would turn out well. I find that encouraging too. In fact, I thank God that conversion, life transformation is within his realm and not within mine or yours. That is very encouraging indeed. If you will remember what I taught last week about parables, they are a revelation of God's character and nature. That is the common link between all the parables. We were fed a bunch of baloney in the 50s that parables only taught one truth. And think about it. If, if the enemy of Christ could reduce our understanding of parables to only one thing, wow, he has really limited our understanding of God and his kingdom. And, and so parables do teach a whole lot more. There's an obvious truth that this parable, this short parable teaches us, but there's some amazing things that this parable reveal about the king of the kingdom. So, this is a wonderful, wonderful thing. So the obvious truth, to really be crystal clear, is that God's church would start off very, very small, but end very, very big, okay? God will be very, very sad by men, women, and children who don't accept him, who choose not to live for eternity with God. He will be very, very sad by that. But on the flip side, on the flip side, he will be very, very satisfied with the family of God who have chosen him, and he will relish the relationship that he will have with them for all eternity. So that's good news. So now, let, let's understand this parable and see what it reveals to us about the king of the kingdom. And I say that because each parable now, after the sower, begins with the kingdom of God is like. The kingdom of heaven is like. Because it reveals about the kingdom because the kingdom is all about the king. So here we have it. Here's the first lesson. And that is so wonderful. Here it is. God is in control. I hope your heart just leapt for joy knowing that as messy as this world is, it's okay because God is in control. And I'm so glad God is in control and it's not the world. It's not the enemy. It's not the world and furthermore, it's not the church. It's not even the church that is in control. Only God, who is the king of the kingdom, who is in control. And what that means for us is this. God grows the church. It's not Pastor Ray, not Pastor Leo. It's not our head elders. It's God. God grows the church. Matthew 16, verse 18 makes this crystal, crystal clear. Let me read that verse for you. You'll recognize it. Now I say to you, these words are written in red ink in your Bible. So you know, coming right from Jesus. Now I say to you, that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. Amen. Historically, we have spent too much time trying to prove that Peter is the little rock, the pebble, and Jesus is the big rock, the boulder. And by spending all this time and energy, we miss the heart of the passage. The real truth from this text is, I will build my church. That is a promise from Jesus because God and God alone can change a heart, can convert a soul. God is in control, and part of that control is growing His church. It is His church. So, quiz number two. Who will build His church? Jesus. God will build His church. This is the heart and soul of this great truth. 
And the good news is it takes all the pressure off of you and me. We, however, have the privilege of participating in the process. There's a lot of P's. We have the privilege of having a front row seat as we witness the miraculous power of the Holy Spirit. Friends, there's nothing like it to see God at work transforming a soul, transforming a person from a sinner into a saint. And you had the privilege to see that happen right in front of your eyes. The mustard tree represents the triumph of the gospel message. God wins. If you were discouraged this morning when you came to church, I hope you leave today encouraged. Why? Because God wins. Hallelujah. God is responsible for the victory that he knows is happening, that he knows is coming. Praise God. He and he alone is in control. So, two truths so far from this short, sweet parable. The church starts small, but it ends gloriously. Next, God is in control. And that is glorious news for followers of Jesus Christ. The third lesson from this parable, the second lesson regarding God's incredible nature is this. The king of the kingdom knows the end from the beginning. See? He, he could tell us how the church would start small. Well, we're not to the finish line yet, but he knows in advance that it will be glorious because he has prophetic power. He knows the end from the beginning. And that's glorious news. That is, again, a great source of encouragement. And I praise God for this. The fact is, you and I are not gambling with our future. Our future is assured. God knows. God knows. And He is all-knowing, and He's also all-powerful. And I praise God He's also (laughs) all-loving. And you combine those three realities, and there is nothing you and I have to fear as we face the future. God is all-powerful and all-loving and all-knowing. So there's no surprises. There's no rolling the dice. Our futures are in great hands because they're in the hand of God. Thank you, Jesus. So, let's apply this to us. Today, the growth of the church in North America is very, very slow. Do you know All Christian churches in North America, only 10% of them are growing. Only 10%. See, folks, we are so blessed here at East Pasco. I mean, almost every week people join the church here. And it's wonderful. And so we're not confronted with what is happening in the other 90% of churches who are plateaued or dying. And I praise God for our, our church here. But the reality is, it can be very, very discouraging. And and there's a reason why. Our society is extremely secular. If you believe that we're a Christian nation, I've got some land in southern Florida that I'd like to sell you. The, The reality is, our society is probably the second or third most secular nation in the world. We wish... Rich, self-satisfied people would see and sense their desperate need of Jesus. But most don't. Most don't. The church today does not resemble the church described in the book of Acts. The church today reflects the church in 
the book of Revelation chapter 3, and that church is called Laodicea. That church is filled with people who, are, who think they are rich and have need of nothing. Today, we could get discouraged. Today, we could get depressed. Today, we could even make a decision to slowly drift away. We could, but that would be a huge mistake. According to Jesus and the parable of the mustard seed, the end result will be glorious. Let's not miss out on the very best part. Got one amen. The others of you were deep in contemplation, I know. Friends, it's so easy to start so many things, but it's so much harder to finish them. Do you know marathon runners? These are incredible athletes that have the ability to run 26.2 miles. But do you realize one-tenth of one percent of people in this country who would like to run a marathon finish? Most quit. And it's because it's so hard. Authors, there's so many books. I love books. I have a lot of books. But do you realize there are a lot of people that start writing books? There are very, very few people that finish writing books. It's so easy to start so many things. But the key to success is always how we finish. You're all on the journey to heaven. Don't get sidetracked. Don't get distracted. Be determined. Because Jesus also taught in Matthew 24, verse 13, he who endures to the end will be saved. We have so much to look forward to. Let's not blow it. Well, friends, Here's my personal application today. If Jesus can share a short parable, I guess I can share a short sermon. So here are my two applications. Let's be faithful, my friends, until the end. And let's be 100% committed to Jesus Christ and His cause. Let's be committed as we patiently wait for the return of Jesus Christ. Second, let's pull out all the stops and be faithful witnesses of Jesus Christ because, my friends, that's our family business. Amen? Amen. Please pull out your connection card. You'll notice I don't have to explain about filling out the data in the front. But I would like to focus on the commitment that I would like you to make. If the Spirit of God is touching your heart, put a check by all of the questions that apply to you. Would you like to memorize this whole parable of two verses? 90% of all businesses fail. If you believe me, put a check there. Jesus' church started small, but it will finish gloriously. If you believe that, if you believe God's word, put a check there. God alone is in control. He knows the end from the beginning. If you would like to receive information about becoming a member here, we invite you to check that box too. If you'd like to join a disciple-making group, small group, put a check there as well. God bless you. Sing with me while the offering is collected.
Thank you, dear Jesus, for giving us so much truth to build our faith upon. Please, please increase our faith as we march down to that fabulous finish line. Bless each worshiper here today and those streaming. Because when you return, dear Lord, the prayer of our hearts is that you will find us and our families our loved ones, faithful when you return. Amen.